The Teaching Privacy Project aims to explain how online privacy works. On our website, teachingprivacy.org, you will find 10 principles for protecting your online privacy. Our next principle is, sharing information over a network means you give up control of that information forever. Years ago, before everyone was on the internet, the way you shared information with your friends and family was in person, or on the phone, or by writing a letter. Let's consider two problems of the digital age, misinterpretation and people outside of your intended audience seeing the information. Were there ever misinterpretations? It was pretty rare in person because your audience could see your body language and facial expressions. It happened a little more over the phone because your audience couldn't see you, but the tone of your voice still conveyed a lot of your intention. It happened the most in letters, especially when they were typed. However, since letters took so long to write and cost money to send, people thought more about what they wrote. Did anyone outside your intended audience ever see or hear firsthand the information you were sharing? It never happened with in-person or phone communication, unless either someone was in earshot, they picked up another line, you were on a speakerphone, or they were recording the conversation without your consent. Most of those cases were rare. Did anyone ever forward a copy of your letter to someone? Again, the time and cost it took to make the copy and send it, combined with the explicit breach of trust of sharing information clearly sent to just the recipient, meant that it was also very uncommon. And then came the ubiquity of the internet, email, and social networks. And the world changed. People, for the most part, still behave like they did in the old days, believing the social norms of yesteryear still hold. For example, they assume that emails are just like letters, only faster and free. They don't realize this low barrier of entry leads to much less time proofreading, so the messages have more errors and possible misinterpretations. In general, they don't realize the nature of the underlying technology allows for use and misuse at a far grander scale. They believe they are safe when they are not. Now, when you send information, for example, text, images, and video, to one person only, there is a chance it could be instantly seen and possibly misinterpreted by millions, even billions of people. This could result from one of your recipients not understanding or respecting your for your eyes only wishes, or sharing it with someone else, who then shares it with someone else and so on, without passing along those restrictions. Even worse, the information could live on forever, and you can never take it back. It's like an untrue rumor about you, which has run rampant in your school, and then spills out to your teachers, friends, future employers, and other people around the world you have yet to meet. Scary. When you compound this with how easy it is to create text and multimedia information with a cell phone in your pocket, and how quickly you can send it for free to someone to start that unintended data avalanche, it gives pause. Even more concerning are data breaches to cloud services and mobile phones, in which data that was always intended to remain private is made public. As bad as that sounds, there are still things you can do about it. Think before you post. When you share information on the internet, assume that it will be duplicated and that you will no longer have control over it or be able to erase it. In other words, avoid posting anything you wouldn't want to have permanently on the record, seen by everyone. Assume your friends can't be trusted to protect your information. Imagine the reactions of your target audience when sharing information. What might they think when they see or hear it? Also, consider the reactions of people who aren't your target audience. Consider how your interests might change over time when deciding whether to share information. What's funny now could be very awkward later. Customize the technology. Regularly check your privacy settings on your mobile apps, computer software, and online accounts. The default is often to share every type of information with the widest audience possible. You have to opt out if you don't want to share. 
Encrypt any sensitive data you store on cloud services. Communicate about preferences. Check your privacy status with companies. Banks, insurance providers, hospitals, and other companies are often legally bound to let you opt out of at least some types of data sharing. If you're the recipient of information, make sure you understand what the sender's rules for sharing it are, so you nip the virality in the bud. Conversely, if you're the sender of information, convey what your expectations are about how far the data should go. But keep in mind that this does not guarantee your expectations will be honored. The bottom line is that sharing releases control. But if you're thoughtful about what you share and how you share it, and you make your expectations clear, you can minimize negative consequences.